And these are the untold stories of Swedish music star Agneta Falskog, who rose to international stardom as a member of ABBA. And the same music group would not only tear her home apart, but made sure she lived in isolation for the rest of her life. So why exactly is she kicking so hard against an ABBA reunion? Let's find out while showing some of her rare photos. Agneta had already figured out what she wanted to spend the rest of her life doing when her mates were still crying over candies. With no solid musical background, she successfully wrote her first song at age 6. Her mother was a storekeeper, and her father was a music enthusiast. He made sure that she mastered the piano as a child and also got her into the church choir. In 1960, at age 10, Agneta formed her first band with two of her friends. They performed at local events and gatherings. Although their followership was impressive, a lot of internal issues made them dissolve the band. She dropped out of school when she was 15 to pursue her music dreams, and life just wouldn't stop serving her surprises. To make ends meet, Agneta juggled performing in an Enghardt's band and working as a telephonist for a car firm. It was there that her life turned around. The local band soon became very popular, and Agneta had to drop her job so she could focus fully on the band. Heartbreak turned her into a music star as an ugly breakup would inspire the song that brought her to the limelight. Agneta wrote Jagvar Sakar to nurse her heartaches. Little did she know that it was going to be her ticket to stardom. The band practiced her song and soon it became the audience's favorite. Falskog's newly found fame was going to bring a lot of blessings her way, and as that happened, a few uncomfortable things came into the picture as well. One of the members of her band had a relative who would retire to become a record producer, and when Enghardt sent him a demo recording of the band, he only wanted one person, Agneta. Two things intrigued him about the young musician, her voice and her song so he offered her a spot on his label. Agneta was reluctant to take this as she was concerned that he only wanted her and not her team, but she still signed the contract anyway. And that was the beginning of Agneta's journey with Cupol Records. The label did a proper recording of her debut single, Jagvar Sakar, and it was released in September 1967. The song easily topped the Swedish charts after its first four months, selling over 80,000 copies. Although she had achieved significant success with her breakthrough song, still Agneta was not satisfied. She was slowly working her way to become one of Sweden's most popular pop music artists. Her fame kept growing, but by 1969, she was going to make a tragic mistake that almost swallowed her career. She pleaded not guilty, but her audience was not interested. In 1969, Agneta released the song Zigger Narvan which was about a teenage girl attending a gypsy wedding and falling in love with the bride's husband. The music was met with racist remarks because it was just around the time when the gypsies were in a media battle with Sweden. She was accused of trying to make money from the situation by recording her song. This shook her fan base, but she was in luck as people have gotten so addicted to her music, so it was easy to forgive her. Another incident that nearly folded her career was when she listened to Love. Agneta met German songwriter Dieter Zimmermann, and their relationship quickly evolved into a steamy romance. Zimmermann promoted her albums, and soon he had her on the top of the German charts. He then suggested that she relocate to Germany, promising that she would achieve even greater success there. If only Agneta knew. Zimmermann proposed to her, and she accepted, so together they made the move to Germany. On getting there, she would realize that it was a lie and the partnership was never going to work. She described the record producers as horrible, and she soon broke up with Zimmerman and returned to Sweden. Agneta hoped that this was the last time Love was going to try to deceive her. She was so wrong. Love was going to bring another musician to Agneta's path, and this time she would be forced to stop music after the breakup. The singer met Bjorn Uves in 1969 and they began their love journey immediately. Together with Annie Fried, Lingstadt, and Benny Anderson, they would form one of Sweden's most popular and successful music groups, ABBA. You might remember them from popular hits like Mamma Mia, The Winner Takes It All, and their breakthrough, Waterloo. 
They were a raging sensation both on the stage and in the studio, but one thing their fans never understood was the reason for their split. The group disbandment was a result of a lot of things, but the most popular reason was that they couldn't handle the increased personal fame, so their relationship suffered and soon everyone wanted to be cut loose. During the peak of their success, a lot of people argued that Agnetta and Annie Frid didn't get along. But Agnetta, in an interview, was going to reveal what exactly went wrong. Being two different personalities, it happens that we are irritated over the other's qualities and we are different. We also had different lives, she said. 1982 felt like the right time for the breakup, and so they separated. Reflecting on their reason for separation, Agnetta said, we thought it was no fun anymore. We were divorced, both couples, and it wasn't the same. Although they separated years ago, their music endured and has continued to remain timeless and beloved by fans worldwide. However, the first time Agnetta was in an official relationship, it almost ruined her career. So she would be careful the next time she made herself available to love. Her first marriage was to Bjorn Ulvis. They tied the knot on July 6, 1971, in the village of Verum. A year later, they formed ABBA, and everything fell apart. The couple had two children, Linda, who was born in 1973, and Peter in 1977. Their marriage lasted for seven years, and then they split, citing irreconcilable differences. Agnetta was heartbroken, especially after she found out that Bjorn was dating a week after their divorce. Speaking on their divorce in her 1997 book, As I Am, Agnetta said, we always told the media that it was a happy divorce, which of course was a front. Obviously, we all know that there are no such things as happy divorces, especially when there are children involved. Due to the mess her first marriage made, Agnetta decided that her next relationship was going to be private. And this time, nobody was aware that she was married until her divorce, three years after. Agnetta tied the knot with Swedish surgeon Tomas Sonnenfeld, and their marriage lasted for only three years. The reason for the break. There's no official record of Agnetta ever remarrying after this, but considering how well she hid her last marriage, there's every chance she might be with someone. In a recent interview, when she was asked if she was still open to the idea of a romantic relationship, she said, I live my life as a single, but I do have many friends and there are many men among them. The jolly years were over and tragedies came like a strong wave, and it forced Agnetta into a recluse. After ABBA disbanded, Agnetta struggled to rekindle her solo career, and the process was very slow because of a phobia that had eaten deep into her consciousness. Agnetta had always been scared of flight, but the fear worsened during ABBA's 1979 American tour, when their plane, which was headed to Boston, ran out of fuel and hit a tornado. The pilot managed to get a grip of the situation by forcing the plane to an emergency landing, but even though they all arrived in one piece, something had died in Agnetta. According to her, she was already terrified of flying when this happened, and this made it even worse. I had to have therapy for my fear. It is getting better, but it takes a long time. I can fly now for two or three hours, but no more. For the next eight years of her life, Agnetta traveled by road, but in 1983, she would be reminded that it was just as dangerous. Her private bus somersaulted on the highway and she was thrown out of the window, but she survived. I must have a guardian angel looking after me as I've had such bad luck, but I survived, she said. Another shocking confession that she made was that she struggled with stage fright. According to her, she found the faces of the fans terrifying, and she believed that their shouting, boiling, and screaming stemmed from a place of hate rather than admiration. She used to have all kinds of nightmares when they would suddenly pounce on her and consume her. For this reason, we might never see Agnetta perform live again. I won't perform live again, she said. I'm going to do some TV shows and videos, but nothing else. I don't like to travel too much or do concerts. I'm more of a studio and home girl. Agnetta accepted all that life brought to her with good faith, hoping that one day she would be truly happy again. But this unfortunate event was going to force her into isolation. She was going to lose her mother in the most grueling manner. In the early 1990s, Agnetta's mother jumped off the window of the apartment she shared with her husband and she landed to her death. Agnetta's father died a year later and the Sweden star was beyond shattered. She managed to keep all of this away from the public for almost a decade. 
According to her, she was 71 and her father would also die a year later. It is so painful. You want them with you and to have known your grandchildren. I was depressed after that. Those were terrible years, Agnetta revealed. Speaking more on the topic, Agnetta confessed that she merely survived, the pain never left. Another unforgettable episode was with a stalker. Agnetta only shares her love life experience when something goes wrong, and it was no different this time with Gert Vandergraaf, the Dutch forklifter. According to the rumors, they were in a relationship after Agnetta's separation from Thomas Sonnenfeld in 1993. Although she denies it, arguing that it was merely friendship, there was evidence that proved otherwise. After she ended their relationship, Vandergraaf began to stalk her. In 2000, Agnetta issued a restraining order that banned her ex-boyfriend from seeing or talking to her. Vandergraaf broke the orders when he followed her back to Sweden. Agnetta got him arrested and deported, but the forklifter still had so much fight left in him. Vandergraaf was banned from Sweden, and a few months after his restriction ended, he was sighted near Agnetta's estate in Akiro. Not much has been heard from him ever since, and we certainly hope that it stays that way. So where do we go from here? At some point, Agnetta couldn't take it anymore, and she needed an escape. After the release of I Stand Alone in 1988, Agnetta embarked on a 17-year hiatus, and during this time, she said she dedicated her time to astrology, yoga, and horseback riding in an isolated country house in Akiro. In April 2002, Agnetta sent a shocking wave around the industry with the sudden release of a new single, I Thought You'd Ever Change Your Mind. The ABBA singer refused any extensive promotion for her song, but still, it peaked at number two in Sweden. And to date, it is her highest charting UK single. A week later, she released the album My Coloring Book, and it dominated both in Finland and Germany. She appeared with her former ABBA bandmates at the opening of the Mamma Mia! musical in Stockholm, and this got her fans buzzing. It got unbearable on July 8, 2008, when they all appeared at the Swedish premiere of the film version of Mamma Mia. I would sell my house to see ABBA sing together again, a fan exclaimed in an interview. But sadly, Agnetta seemed to have shut that part of her life forever. She confessed that she felt like the black sheep of the group, and after their split, she wouldn't listen to their music for years. I was very tired after the whole ABBA period. I needed a break from it as it had been consuming, Agnetta said. When asked what her favorite ABBA song was, she said it was Bjorn's hit The Winner Takes It All. Bjorn wrote it about us after the breakdown of our marriage. The fact that he wrote it exactly when we divorced is touching. I didn't mind. These days, Agnetta spends a lot of her time with her kids and grandchild, and she describes it all as an incredible experience. While she has made her stance on an ABBA reunion clear, the singer has still not announced her retirement, and fans expect hits from her from time to time. With a career spanning decades, Falzkog's influence endures, and her music style will continue to inspire the new generation. Agnetta Falzkog, now 73, is still all we remember her as, as she enjoys old age with her family in their mansion in Sweden. She has an estimated net worth of $200 million. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our other videos of beautiful actresses on the end screen below.